I'm Zena Awesome. This is Vandar Awesome. Today we're going to talk about the type of cancer he has. It's brain cancer. It's called glioblastoma. It's often referred to as GBM. It's about 12,000 people a year get diagnosed with it here in the United States. It's very aggressive. It's usually a GBM is stage four and unlike other cancers where stage four means it's it's invaded other other organs with uh, this cancer it's stage four because it's so aggressive and it grows so quickly now one of the problems with treating it is that the tumors are made of a lot of different types of cells and there it's really really complicated um, they express themselves in a lot of different ways so what happens is each time you use a treatment the cells that grow back the tumor that grows back is immune to that treatment so you really can't use that treatment again and as far as standard treatments go there's only two chemos and one biological that are FDA approved plus the um, TTF tumor treatment fields that's on his head with the uh, diagnosis they say if you can tolerate the main treatment which is you get surgery to remove most of the tumor you have the chemo and you have the radiation so you don't have an option like to skip part you do all of that and then you're likely to live 12 to 15 months there's other markers that will indicate whether or not uh, cancer treatment will work um, one of them is called MGMT. If you're MGMT positive, then, then that, that means that the chemo that they offer will probably help. If you're not MGMT positive, then the chemos they have probably won't help. The bio chemo is a drug that's designed to actually attack the tumor, whereas a biological is a drug to help your body fight the tumor. And in this case, this case of Vastin is FDA approved for glioblastoma and what it does is it prevents the tumor cell, the tumor from being able to call the blood vessels to it because it, anything that um, grows quickly has to have a food supply and that does it through the use of um, blood. But of course it also affects blood vessels throughout the whole body. Uh, Vandar was on it for about a year and a half with minor side effects, but now that he's been off it since February, we're thinking he probably had a lot more side effects than we realized. So we didn't, he, we didn't actually see them all. Right. So now he's, um, he did, of course, he did go through the first set of treatments. He had his first brain surgery, which is when they technically diagnose it because they have to do a biopsy of the tumor they take out. It was uh, mostly a full removal. The reason they can't remove it all is because it has microscopic tendrils that that uh, go out from it, and you can't you can't take out microscopic tendrils. So all they can do is take out the main tumor, but there's still tumor cells in there. The um, so he had his first surgery in October 2016. And he was, um, he had his second surgery in September of 2017. That's, uh, you know, 11 months later. That's actually considered very positive. He was, he had the surgery, he had the radiation, and he was using the first course of chemo, TMZ. And, of course, he uses the tumor treatment fields. So at that point, he had pretty much already um, beat the odds. Now... He had his second surgery and then we used the Avastin and he had that year and a half in between surgeries and then he just had his last surgery in March. And he's going to be going in for a biopsy next week because we're not sure exactly what's going on or what the, whether it's cancer or um, scar tissue. So you hear about all the great new improvements about treatment, treatment for glioblastoma, but when you actually read them, they'll say things like, yes, the people lived, instead of living only 15 months, they lived 21 months. Or you'll hear, they went 
to progression free instead of six months they went progression free for 11 months so even the quote-unquote successful treatments are only extending life a little bit and they're all done through trials you hear about the immunotherapy and just all kinds of different things and they're actually not available for regular treatment and although there's several laws that say that that the doctors are allowed to do it um, research trials are expensive and so you can try to get compassionate use but they don't necessarily want to spend their money you know on you just to extend your life or maybe extend your life and as far as trials go they want them to be successful so they have very very specific rules about the criteria before you enter the trial and then the criteria while you're in the trial so trials are tough a lot of them with this type of cancer you actually have to have the surgery the brain surgery done as part of the trial because it, say for example they're going to make um, a vaccine they need your cancer cells they need some of the tumor to make the vaccine and they want to get it when it's fresh and they want to do whatever processes they want to do and so they want their own doctors doing it to make sure that everything do is done to the um, research the trial standards uh, one of the problems with finding different drugs to to treat glioblastoma is the blood-brain barrier that the brain is protected from a lot of things and a lot of times the chemo can't cross that so they have that challenge the other challenge is that in one article I read they said in the future they might even call it 500 different types of cancer or sub cancers because each tumor is actually that different and they don't really understand understand it very well because even these quote-unquote successes don't actually live or the people don't really live that long in what they call a successful trial and a lot of the trials are only um, you know still phase two phase three and they're they're actually literally years away before they'll be available as conventional treatment the other problem with this type of cancer is that because it's the brain it causes a bunch of other problems for example seizures they actually with Vandar his seizure happened in May of 2016 um, he had really bad aphasia aphasia is where you can't find the right words he was um, he was upset as part of our business he'd had a, a phone call with one of our business associates and the call didn't go as well as he wanted and he came in to tell me all about it I was in the bedroom because I have my own health issues and he was using words and they were all correct words as far as they were real words but the sentences like every fifth word was the wrong choice of word and he was using the same wrong word in context so he's telling me all this and I'm going honey honey I, I, I don't I don't understand what you're saying and he's just he got actually kind of pissed at me so I had to follow him out I had to ask him a few questions I did the stroke test to see if he was having a stroke and he wasn't and so we went to the emergency room and basically they diagnosed him with aphasia <laughs> great it did get a little bit better um, obviously before he left the hospital he was in the hospital for a few days they ran all the tests uh, at that time there was no sign of a tumor in its head they did an MRI but it wasn't there um, they actually weren't able to see the tumor until several months later I think it was the third MRI we had before the tumor showed up so he's been on anti-seizure medicine and for him they believe the seizures cause the aphasia you can seizure just means abnormal activity in your brain and you can actually have abnormal activity in your brain anywhere and by activity I mean electricity kind of going through your brain their fire your neurons are firing but they're not supposed to be and that can happen anywhere in your brain and if it's in a small area 
it only affects a small area of your awareness. So although he has seizures, he does not have physical seizures. He does not have absence seizures. He doesn't have any of the types of seizures you normally hear about. If he has a seizure, he's more likely for his aphasia to get worse, or actually he kind of acts like he's drunk. He's a happy guy when he's having a seizure. He's just like almost bouncing off the wall, over the top happy. And for him, that's a seizure. So when the doctors ask, has he had a seizure? I'm like, well, I don't think so. But um, other people can have like what they call auras where they, they see things or you can have um, like, I guess, like with migraines, you can have some weird side effects or um, it's just strange because you think of seizures as someone shaking or you hear about the absent seizure of somebody staring off in the distance and he doesn't have either of those. So you have to deal with seizure medicine, anti-seizure medicine, and anti-seizure medicine itself has a lot of side effects. Um, some people, it reduces your, um, basically your anger threshold. So I do think when he first started the medicine, maybe for the six months or a year, that he was probably a bit grumpier. It kind of lowers that inhibition of when you're going to complain or say something nasty that you would normally be able to just keep to yourself. So some people actually get really bad or really depressed on it, but they consider him as having, as doing well. So um, the other thing you have with this type of cancer, of course, is brain swelling. And what can brain swelling do? It can do just about anything. So even in between all the MRIs we do, um, we were doing them every eight weeks. Right now we're on the cycle to do them every six weeks. Um, if you're having brain swelling from something, it can cause you to be less coordinated, not walk well, have mental problems in remembering, or it can change your personality. That's the other thing about this cancer is it depends where it's at in your brain on how you're affected. You sometimes hear about things on TV shows about people doing strange stuff because of a brain tumor. Well, it, it really can happen. Um, some people have um, impulse control issues or risk issues, um, different, different things, and sometimes it just comes out of the blue and you just it's just on top of everything else. It doesn't mean that the cancer is getting better or worse. It just, it's part of the problem. Last year, Vandar went in the hospital three times, uh, January, May, and December. January, they decided it was seizure activity. They increased his anti-seizure medicine and pretty much he hasn't had any particularly noticeable seizures since then. In May, and, and what happened is it was cognitive. Suddenly he's just not himself. He's less aware than he normally is. In May, we were actually out camping and by uh, five o'clock at night, I decided that it was time to pack up and take him to the VA. That's where we go, the Veterans Hospital. It was about seven hours away. And they did admit him and they did all kinds of cognitive tests on him. We volunteered, or he volunteered to be in a training video because his test results were just so interesting, we'll say. But after three days, he was... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> You're supposed to say it. <laughs> um, after three days, he was pretty much almost back up to baseline. <laughs> they had even had, um, like, took him in a room, or both of us in this room, in this conference room, with like 20 professionals and heads of departments, and this was after he got discharged, but before we went, before we left the hospital, and they had all these people have him do the such and such test, and the such and such test, and ask questions, and he did all these different tests. And then they sent us out of the room. They talked for about half an hour. 
and at the end of the half an hour, they had no consensus on what had happened and why he was in the hospital, what, what caused the change. So we had all these professionals going, well, we know that you know when he came in, he was this way, and now he's this way, he's gotten better, but they had no idea why. And of course, obviously, they still don't. And then in December, he was having a lot of issues, and I kind of waited a little bit longer because of the May stay where they didn't find anything, he just got better on his own. But in December, it ended up he had a urinary tract infection. And I didn't know, because we don't live in a senior home and have people that get urinary tract infections, that a urinary tract infection can affect you mentally. Um, I had just had no idea. So there you go. And that took him months to get back up to baseline from. So it's everything is kind of um, a problem. Of course, the chemo causes um, immune immune problems. You know, his immune system is suppressed, so we have to be extra vigilant about cleanliness, and uh, we don't go places normally where there's a lot of kids. Comic-Con was like the first big thing we've done around a lot of people. That's uh, part of why we choose to do things like camping or driving around and looking at things, because with him being immune compromised and his his immune system goes up and down all the time and I never know exactly where it's at so um, we try to stay away from fast food restaurants we definitely don't eat at buffets and we limit the amount of time we spend eating out because I don't necessarily know the the standards that they're really keeping to in the back and please if you have questions, ask. Um, we're doing this to help uh, people know more about this disease and how it affects people. And um, we really want to share what we've been through, our trials and tribulations.